Allora, welcome to everybody, it's 10 o'clock. First of all, uh, um, some technical uh, ish aspects of uh, the um, meeting. So good morning or good afternoon to everybody. You are Martin. Yes, I'm Martin. I'm here a researcher at the Maurice Institute. I'm working with Marco. And um, soon we'll start with uh, Professor um, Toloroya and his speech. After we will start a, an open debate, which we'd like to keep it open. So we don't have many rules for engagement. So feel free to participate and with your intervention and question later on. Okay. Hello, let me introduce uh, briefly uh, Professor Toloraya. It, uh, uh, we thanks uh, him uh, very, very much because uh, um, he's a great friend of our institute. It was here three years ago for an important conference uh, about the Italian um, Diplomatic Academy where when he explained well the BRICS strategies. And now we are very glad to stay with him again. And thanks a lot for your av availability to uh, make uh, the basic report of this meeting. Uh, just uh, two words of presentation. Uh, uh, Toloraya is uh, the executive director of the BRICS Research Center in Moscow. It is the director of uh, section East Asia, Asia for, of Institute of Economics uh, of uh, the Russian Academy of Science. Was diplomat, uh, specialized in Oriental Studies and visitor professor at the Brookings Institute in the United States. Uh, this is just uh, to give some uh, introductory information about uh, uh, his enormous expertise on uh, BRICS studies. Uh, what is the reason of this uh, um, meeting? We had uh, in uh, 2020 the uh, chairmanship of Russia in BRICS. Now the Germany, uh, chairmanship uh, is uh, for India. And uh, uh, it is very important for us to have a, a, a clear interpretation about the ch Russian chairmanship, the results, and the projection to the Indian chairmanship. Uh, in fact, uh, we have, uh, uh, in this uh, laboratory we have uh, in Rome, we read all the documents uh, related to the Russian chairmanship, especially the final declaration and some other uh, documents we have seen in academic forum and civil forum and so on. And uh, we commented and discussed uh, this document um, and uh, we have uh, a lot, uh, many points uh, that needs to go in in-depth reflections. For instance, uh, uh, what is the prospects of BRICS plus uh, the enlargement, the role of BRICS in these uh, global uh, ch big changes of global governance, the inside uh, the, <coughs> big, uh, the relation <coughs> between <coughs> India and China, the, the tensions. Uh, some experts say oh, there is a, a big change in uh, global governance. We have more and more regional globalizations. So uh, we uh, want to use uh, this opportunity of this morning uh, to clarify uh, some basic aspects about the uh, BRICS strategy. 
not, uh, last but not least, uh, there is the COVID situation. In all the world, uh, we have uh, a big uh, tragedies and uh, big changes in the style of life, in the economic, uh, in the past. <laughs> so, uh, it is important to understand uh, what uh, contribution the BRICS can give, uh, what they leave, uh, and what kind of contribution they can give uh, to the pro progress, uh, future prospects. Sorry for my English, it's not very good like my friend Martin here. Uh, um, and uh, in this aspect, it is important also to understand uh, the connection, the contribution and the role that the BRICS play in comparison with other coordination bodies. First of all, G20. This year, uh, Italy has the chairmanship of the G20. Uh, and usually the BRICS uh, have a previous meeting before the G20 summit. So it is a, already a, consolidate, a consolidated experience. And this is very important to understand this year what kind of contribution the BRICS coordination can give to the better success of G20 uh, coming summit in September. There are a lot of meetings in this period and uh, always uh, the main issues, the real topic is how to face uh, COVID uh, pandemic, uh, pandemia, how to rebuild the recovery and so on. And so uh, in our mind, uh, the BRICS, uh, it should be important to understand the contribution of BRICS uh, to the recovery that is uh, the first commitment uh, in, of the G20. Echo, uh, this is my short e um, introduction. We want to have uh, after, um, on the basis of uh, the uh, Professor Toloraya report, to have a free discussion and free comment and to get out from uh, at the end of this meeting have more clear ideas about uh, uh, the BRICS strategy in this year and in the coming future. future. I thank you all uh, the participants. They are members of uh, our BRICS laboratory and uh, colleagues with which we have a continuous uh, exchange of information. Um, we have uh, in connection, I see uh, colleagues and experts uh, from India, from China, from uh, different countries of Europe, from Turkey and from uh, Emirates. So, uh, this is the situation. I thank you again, uh, everybody, all the participants. And uh, the floor now is to Professor Toloraya. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mark. It's a pleasure to uh, be again, although virtually, in the Institute of Politics in the BRICS Laboratory. I well remember my previous appearance uh, in Rome. And I hope that someday we'll have the opportunity to uh, do, do this again uh, in person, not online. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I can just make it clear that, um, uh, well, uh, some of the, my jobs have changed still since the time. And uh, now I'm speaking strictly in capacity as the vice chairman of the, uh, of the uh, board uh, of uh, BRICS, National Committee for BRICS uh, Research and professor of Moscow Institute of International Relations. So uh, my presentation is called BRICS in the post-COVID era, uh, new challenges, and uh, uh, it uh, covers three topics. Uh, the first one is my general assessment of the current situation, uh, especially in COVID era, and uh, the role uh, 
uh, of BRICS in meeting the challenges that now all the humanity, uh, humanity faces. Uh, and my second part of my presentation is about mm, the outcome uh, of the Russian chairmanship. Uh, it might be a little bit too, uh, too detailed because it contains names of a lots of documents uh, and well and uh, uh, meetings and uh, uh, I would try to make it as short as possible and those who wish to know more can address the presentation which I understand will be uh, in, pub in public domain. And also um, uh, uh, at the, uh, in conclusion, I would like to say some, several words about the role of expert track, track two and track 1.5 in the development of BRICS, uh, based on, on our experience, because National Committee for BRICS Research in Russia is the uh, leading organization which is authorized by the Minister of Foreign Affairs to head uh, this kind of expert activities. Okay, so on we go and. Uh, mm, my first observation uh, is slide two, Valeria. Uh, it's uh, that BRICS, uh, uh, BRICS have encountered a serious challenge in 2020 as all humanity. But uh, as for BRICS, it's exasperated. It's already sluggish development in the past several years. The problems of BRICS are well known and discussed. Uh, they include a lack of economic interdependence between BRICS countries while well, all BRICS countries uh, remain dependent uh, on the West. Uh, lack of political you know, coordination on global issues, although Moscow declaration, uh, which is very lengthy, mentions a lot of political issues, but uh, it just mentioned them and expresses the opinion of the BRICS countries, not uh, much of a, uh, a real cooperation. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, as already been mentioned, uh, growing geopolitical contradictions. Well, uh, I would express my, uh, uh, my personal opinion that India uh, have made a sort of geopolitical choice by joining Quad, and uh, this course puts us on the confrontational course toward China, uh, which is not good for BRICS, of course. However, it should be said that uh, on a positive side, uh, BRICS have uh, weathered the COVID storm better than other uh, international alliances and other international actors. Unlike, uh, well, the Western Alliance, which had, saw a lot of contradictions for, on, on many issues, starting from, well, freedom of movement and ending by the so-called vaccination uh, vaccine war, uh, brief, BRICS mm, uh, was more united in its response and uh, you know, the COVID uh, has in fact strengthened that union rather than weakened it. Um, but uh, we face a number of confrontation, uh, a number of challenges which emerged uh, due to causes out of our control. And also the overall global situation with growing uh, nationalism uh, in which, uh, unfortunately, some of the BRICS countries are also no strangers. Isolationism, a disregard for international laws and practices. Uh, this, all, uh, this all are the challenges BRICS have to meet. In fact, we're speaking about the decline of globalization one uh, under Western control and uh, what the next stage of mm, development of the human country looks still, well, nobody knows. Maybe BRICS is here to answer that. Uh, in January uh, this year, the World Economic Forum published the uh, Global Risk Report. And uh, mm, uh, within next 10 years, you can see it in the slide, uh, the uh, extreme weather and climate uh, uh, are to, are to be one of the chief, uh, chief challenges. Uh, digital power concentration and digital device, cybersecurity, uh, infection diseases, as we know, uh, uh, environmental risks, weapons of mass destruction, livelihood crisis, debt crisis, uh, IT uh, infrastructure breakdown. Uh, next slide, please. 
The risks to it are most likely in the next two years could include employment and livelihood crisis uh, because of the uh, consequence of uh, COVID epidemics and overall economic decline. Uh, widespread dis dis uh, dis uh, disillusionment of the youth of the younger generation. Uh, well, the digital uh, uh, inequality, which I've already mentioned. Uh, human man made environmental dangers, erosion, erosion of social cohesion, as well as traditional challenges like uh, terrorist attacks. Uh, well, uh, speaking about economic development, we see a, a, a sort of redistribution of world uh, economic power as a result of, uh, of the COVID, uh, because the changes here uh, were uh, much more, uh, I would say, uh, unexpected that uh, one, one could have thought. Uh, we will see acid bubbles, uh, price instability, commodity shocks, debt crisis, uh, which are followed by geopolitical risks, uh, including interstate relations, um, and the uh, uh, geopolitization of the uh, uh, natural reserves, like we see with the Nord Stream. Uh, example, uh, for example, the, the project to supply gas to Europe from Russia. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, slide four, please. Uh, and uh, emerging market and uh, developing economies are projected to trace divergent recovery paths. Uh, well, China uh, will probably lead the recovery. Uh, and uh, India uh, will follow suit uh, with 2.7% uh, growth predicted for 2012. Uh, and well, in general, the BRICS countries, some of the BRICS countries are performing better uh, than, uh, than other countries of the world. Next slide, please. Uh, I couldn't but mention about the um, COVID situation in BRICS countries, after all, uh, the BRICS countries is the majority of global population, and it's uh, uh, it's quite understandable that they were severely hit in just number wise uh, with this uh, uh, greatest misfortune. Uh, the la the largest number uh, are confirmed in Brazil and Russia, uh, Brazil, India, uh, Russia, Africa, and China are less affected. Uh, although uh, the pandemics uh, well started in China. Um, and uh, uh, however, uh, Russia still has uh, the fifth largest uh, number of cases after US, Brazil, India, and France in the world. However, it also occupies one of the leading places in the world, uh, according for, to the number of the tests per one million. Uh, next slide, please. Um, uh, what measures uh, could have been taken uh, to fight the, the, uh, the pandemics? I would say that uh, uh, at first, uh, in the early period of uh, COVID uh, epidemics, uh, BRICS countries uh, haven't uh, done enough to coordinate the, uh, their policy. And they mostly relied on the Western guidance um, to fight the epidemics and to follow suit in the certain measures. Uh, so um, I think that uh, much more has been done and in my opinion, for example, which I already expressed many times that at the beginning of the uh, pandemics, uh, an opportunity should have been used for online summit meeting, uh, emergency online meetings of briefs, uh, brief leader, leaders to address together uh, these measures. Uh, however, we have some good examples. For example, BRICS in Development Bank uh, allocated $10 billion to reinforce uh, BRICS economies for the period of the uh, crisis. Um, I should also mention that um, BRICS for several years has been developing the mechanism for vaccination against pandemic diseases. Uh, by the way, uh, Russia and China were uh, among the first, well, Russia was the first to produce the vaccine. And uh, China also followed suit. And uh, we, uh, if it were not for the political pressure, I think that 
uh, of Russia and China would have been the uh, uh, most prominent suppliers of the vaccine uh, to the global. Uh, I myself, well, had a vaccination by Sputnik, and uh, well, I think fine. Um, uh, Russia uh, initiative uh, is to create an early warning system for ep epidemiological threats and uh, uh, develop reg legal regulation for medical prog program. Uh, so, um, uh, now I come to the Russian role and Russian, uh, Russian achievement and well, there may be shortcomings during the uh, last year. Uh, well, despite the challenges, uh, despite the, uh, all the uh, uh, difficulties, uh, the, uh, uh, the BRICS work continued without much hindrance under Russian chairmanship. And um, if you look at Moscow declaration, you will see that the countries uh, in, I think, paragraph 13 express their satisfaction that online meetings and all other different forms of communication uh, ran smoothly. And uh, as a whole, the uh, plan, uh, the program for the BRICS activities were, were uh, fulfilled. Um, well, speaking about practical agreements, uh, Russia, uh, 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 Russia, I uh, think it will uh, uh, made some uh, moves to support uh, BRICS economists recover in trade and investment, encouraging small and medium micro businesses to participate in international trade. Also, strengthen cooperation between banks, central banks, and development banks. Uh, well, activization of the work, work of the new development um, bank, banks. Today, it has approved 70, 76 investment projects uh, for $28 billion. And by the way, during the chairman here, uh, the Eurasian uh, Regional Center of the bank uh, was open in Russia. So uh, let me give you some examples of the, uh, of the uh, agreements reached. I think it's the next slide, is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, the most important, as we see, is the strategy for BRICS economic partnership for the five years. Uh, well, we had another, the first one into f five years ago, but well, obviously it was time to update it uh, as we step into new industrial revolution and promote shared interests uh, uh, in different areas. These areas include a sustainable trade and investment without barriers and sanctions, uh, which some of the BRICS countries are experiencing, especially Russia and China. Uh, advancement of digital economy uh, in the concept of digital transfer, transformation. Uh, sustainable growth and development in the context of climate, energy, human capital development, and food security. Oh, I BRICS, yes. Okay. Uh, BRICS adopted guidelines for promoting effective participation of medium, uh, uh, small, and micro uh, enterprises. Uh, international trade, uh, which uh, that implies uh, exchange of view and share best practice or measures and approaches to integrating uh, these enterprises in the mainstream e economy. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, stuff is wrong with the slide, is it, Valeria? Could you just change it? It's okay. okay. Uh, all right. So, um, uh, the trade ministers uh, also agreed to foster collaboration with uh, PARTNIR to encourage capacity building in cutting edge technologies and uh, uh, to establish BRICS industrial and science parks, innovation center, uh, technology business incubators, and enterprise networks. Uh, trade ministers published BRICS understanding on, uh, on investment facilitation report aimed at strengthening cooperation uh, while promoting cooperation, hence transparency and improved efficiency. Uh, environmental ministers agreed to promote the uh, circular economy in the control of sustainable patterns of products and consumption to be included in national plan for economic recovery after COVID. 
And um, this is aimed to avoid unilateral and protectionist measures to ensure that all uh, COVID uh, related measures are targeted, proportional, transparent, and temporary. Uh, well, uh, this is an important initiative because still there's uh, much doubt, well, how will we ever return to a normal uh, or do we have to, uh, to create a new normal uh, with as much, uh, with as small damage to the existing practice as possible? Ministers of Agriculture called for rolling back uh, the trade and production uh, practices distorting uh, the trade in, in, in agriculture and uh, uh, ensure that the, uh, these measures which are used to fight BRICS wouldn't be, uh, become entrenched and continue to distort global trade. Uh, they also agreed to improve investment environment in agricultural sphere. Uh, ministers uh, of Labour agreed to mitigate the impact of the pandemics uh, by creating uh, new jobs, including those provided by medium and small enterprises, uh, removing barriers faced by vulnerable groups, uh, and ensuring basic social protection for all uh, for all uh, those uh, who who need to combat all forms of poverty. Uh, these, the ministers also requested BRICS Network of Labor Research Institute to conduct research of support of employment and income in the context of COVID-19 crisis. So, um, uh, next slide, please. So, may I now say a couple of words about the Russian experience in fighting COVID, uh, which I think is uh, quite remarkable, uh, because um, Russia, in fact, managed to uh, to perform uh, during this very difficult year, uh, much better than many people, uh, both in the West and in, in Russia proper, ha have expected. And it's important that um, our uh, system of uh, healthcare, uh, which is uh, well, which we inherited from former Soviet Union, uh, it was uh, it, uh, it it turned out to be very efficient in combating that kind of, uh, I would say, national disaster. And although uh, maybe we lack some equipment and high-tech technologies, uh, high-tech uh, high practices, nevertheless, in the mass uh, uh, infection uh, situation like this, uh, the system uh, worked better than many expected. Uh, well, mm, the virus the virus spread officially from 31st of January uh, 2000, uh, 2020, and uh, mm, uh, and since February 2020, uh, uh, Russia was uh, was uh, losing billions uh, of rubles just from the uh, from the uh, cessation of trade and exchange with China alone and it got worse later. Next slide. Uh, the government anti-crisis measures are now to, today uh, amount to roughly 1.4 uh, trillion rubles. Uh, that's about uh, two, $2 billion, uh, uh, or approximately 1.2% of GDP. Uh, the specific economic support measures introduced by the government and central bank uh, match uh, the, those introduced in other countries. Uh, but uh, there are certain instruments aimed at uh, supporting regional basis, uh, regional budgets, small and medium enterprises, uh, affected set, uh, uh, sectors, and uh, uh, the, the biggest companies uh, on which, the, which are the, the backbone of the economy. Uh, so, um, I would name just a few examples. Uh, for example, in uh, protection of the population, of the uh, so, uh, social security, uh, the unemployment allowances uh, were increased, and additional monthly payments, uh, payments for families and children were, were increased, and uh, the repair of loans uh, were uh, prolonged. And uh, uh, insurances uh, for healthcare also were increased. 
for regional budgets, uh, there was uh, $200 billion, uh, rubles, sorry, allocated for the regional budgets and uh, uh, increased uh, allocation to provide social benefits uh, to unemployed. Uh, support for business included uh, provision of direct non reimbursable financial assistance grants to small and medium enterprises, uh, establishment of the guarantee fund for restructuring credit of companies affected by the uh, COVID situation, uh, new uh, interest free credit prog uh, programs. Uh, Support of organizations essential for Russian economy, like preferential credits to create a monthly amount of working capital to maintain employment. It simplified the procedure for conclusion of one year government procurement contracts, uh, is easing the requirements for procurement with, uh, with companies for state ownership, lots of mortgage uh, uh, program, etc. Uh, well, uh, the next slide uh, also uh, shows you the measures to support the small and medium enterprises, uh, which I which I mentioned. Uh, so I won't uh, read uh, uh, well all the details. Uh, you can see them, and um, also the regardless of the BRICS uh, of this uh, of the COVID uh, situation. Uh, Russia continued uh, the measures to uh, to foster uh, digitalization. Next slide, please. Um, for example, uh, uh, well, uh, the uh, COVID situation uh, in fact speeded up, as the many other countries, uh, well, the system of uh, communication, uh, payment, and. Uh, uh, Yes, and uh, uh, especially the, the payment system and the uh, system of orders uh, have, have, have developed uh, a lot. Uh, for that, the Central Bank of Russia uh, have developed some measures, which I also mentioned on the slide when they were uh, read them all. And, uh, uh, well, it's important that all of these measures were uh, were used for easing both for both for sellers and buyers uh, to use their funds and uh, provide uh, the easing of the terms of uh, credits and and uh, payments. Uh, in uh, next slide, please. Uh, in September 2020, uh, the government adopted the economic recovery plan. Uh, it costs 6.4 trillion rubles, and there are two stages on the, on the period until 2024. Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure uh, how this uh, plan would work. Uh, it's uh, uh, include several, uh, well, uh, the, the first stage is entire 2021, um, and uh, it will most depend, of course, on how the COVID situation will develop. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, we plan to increase uh, the disposable income of population about 2.5% and achieve the, the GDP growth about 3% this year, and uh, especially uh, uh, increase the export of non oil and gas um, products by three to four percent. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, the measures include a mechanism to you know, support private investment, uh, self employed people, uh, uh, launch of special uh, digital ecosystem. Uh, uh, launch of new programs for high technologies, etc. Uh, so, well, I already uh, mentioned that Russia has uh, 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 only three vaccines, uh, uh, three competing vaccines uh, registered and they are used. And uh, uh, I think it's a good thing that all of them are proved to be safe and efficient. 
uh, and as I mentioned, uh, Russia is ready to uh, export them, and we have already 60 countries who approve them. Uh, however, uh, it's not so easy to uh, work with the governments uh, who are of, of some countries which uh, uh, we just like the idea that the uh, the, the vaccine just is, uh, just is from Russia. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, already, I'm not sure about the last figure, but in Russia, I think it, about 10,000, 10 million people have already uh, been uh, vaccinated with the first jab. Uh, and uh, the situation with the uh, coronavirus spread in Russia has stabilized. Uh, the number of the new cases is steadily decreasing, although, of course, uh, it's still far from being zero. But anyway, uh, there's so far there's no new wave of uh, of the coronavirus. Uh, so next slide, please. It's important that the uh, that that the uh, this crisis uh, didn't uh, did did not uh, result in a systematic economic crisis as, as many have expected. The crisis didn't spread to backboard industries and companies, and uh, there was no decline in the construction sector. Uh, and actually, the construction uh, returned to volume returned to the pre to the pre COVID era figures. Uh, there was not much decline in well in the production of uh, minerals. Uh, uh, and export commodities, although the, the export have declined because of the lack of uh, demand. Um, and uh, mm, I think it's important uh, for the BRICS countries uh, to use this example and to use cooperation among them uh, to, uh, to imitate uh, this, uh, this experience. Um, a closer cooperation between BRICS countries was also an opportunity to mitigate the negative effects of the of the crisis, and I think this might be not the last crisis, and to contribute to a restoration of production, uh, cross-border trade, and cross-border investment. And uh, this, in turn, will be uh, an important uh, factor for recovery of the global economy. Uh, well, uh, so far for the mm, uh, uh, for my vision of the brief development and uh, well uh, the information how uh, Russia economically uh, weathered the uh, the COVID uh, crisis. Uh, now I would like to say a few words about the role of experts like those present here in the development of uh, uh, BRICS uh, policies and practices. Um, uh, you know that uh, uh, BRICS itself is a uh, much of a product of intellectual efforts, and uh, uh, when the first first meeting, uh, first summit meeting of uh, uh, of uh, heads of state uh, took place in, in Russia, uh, no one would have expected that it will develop in such a vibrant organization. And uh, in fact, this is uh, one of the achievements of the expert communities of the five countries uh, to promote uh, BRICS, to promote the ideology of uh, cooperation, and to make uh, suggestions to the government, which many of them were implemented. Um, uh, uh, in Russia, the, uh, these efforts are led by National Committee uh, on BRICS Research. And uh, mm, uh, well, it, well, the expert uh, the expert track is uh, is a very important instrument for conflict resolution uh, to uh, uh, to build dialogue uh, also also between the public and civil sectors. Um, well, uh, there's a lots of channels and venues for communication in every possible area starting from arts and uh, education, uh, well, ending in, uh, in various scientific and technological areas. But I would like to speak about what is close to 
to our job. This is civil and academic uh, dim dimensions uh, of our BRICS. Uh, it's uh, aimed at engaging all stakeholders and any individuals in, this, in BRICS uh, to um, take part in our discussion platforms and uh, create conditions facilitating dialogue and generate innovative ideas. Uh, although uh, this year was uh, particularly difficult for that kind of activities because of the lack of person-to-person uh, -person communication, uh, nevertheless, the uh, capabilities of uh, the electronic communications, uh, for example, the system we now use, have helped a lot to, uh, to promote dialogue. Uh, well, by the way, I don't know if anybody heard or not, but uh, Zoom is taking measures to exclude a certain Russian organization from its from its system. And uh, well, I don't think it's a good example for uh, international and inter-societal uh, cooperation. But well, uh, anyway, we can use uh, other platforms, but th this is a pity. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Mm -hmm. uh. On the slide, you may see the core events uh, within uh, the uh, academic and sealed track of the Russian BRIC chairmanship. In total, we organized more than uh, 30 uh, round tables and two large uh, forums. And uh, I'd like to also to highlight the BRICS International School, uh, which is uh, organized by uh, BRICS. It's already its fourth year, and I hope. Um, I hope that, uh, uh, well, so one day uh, it will be possible to, uh, to, to conduct it not uh, online, but uh, offline so that the future leaders of BRICS uh, would get to know each other personally. Um, the most uh, uh, widely discussed issues during these uh, meetings and these uh, webinars uh, were, the, of course, the impacts of COVID, global governments, uh, BRICS and G20, uh, goal, goals and the result of current BRICS chairmanship, uh, education, people to people uh, contacts, uh, science and technology cooperation, energy, environment, climate, uh, development goals, healthcare, gender equality. Uh, it's, uh, it was a little bit not on full compliance with the agenda of official tracks. Uh, so it um, gave additional opportunity to the experts and to the, to the public figures, representative civil society, uh, to uh, add their voice uh, to the uh, to the official track and maybe uh, form the future directions of cooperation. Next slide, please. Uh, well, uh, we proud that uh, uh, the academic forum uh, this year uh, uh, took uh, place in a very uh, successful manner. Uh, it was partly online and partly offline. All the 200 delegates from BRICS countries, international experts, they managed to gather in person in Moscow. And the uh, uh, academic forum uh, uh, proved to be a great success. Uh, the participants elaborated recommendations for BRICS leaders in, uh, in the following fields of pillars, stability and security, economic growth, investment cooperation, digitalization, sustainable development, energy infrastructure, food and, uh, and environmental safety, education, and healthcare. You can see that they uh, comprise uh, the, whole, uh, uh, the whole agenda of BRICS and add something to the official uh, agenda as well. And uh, I think that these recommendations would be useful for the next chairmanship and for the uh, works of Breeze. Um, also, uh, the committee last year prepared three uh, analytical reports, uh, strategy of economic partnership, um, women's economic empowerment, um, best practices uh, of development uh, of remote territories, 
and uh, this was done together uh, with the uh, uh, Russian and uh, BRICS countries uh, ministries and uh, government uh, agencies. Uh, well, one of the important things uh, about the BRICS activities is uh, the, caution, uh, the caution of implementing the decisions. Um, unfortunately, uh, so far, BRICS uh, has no institutionalized uh, organ, uh, any kind of uh, coordinate, co coordinating uh, mechanism like secretariat. And so the issue of implementing the decision uh, of the summit meetings and other meetings is very important. Uh, in many cases, um, uh, uh, this implementation depends just on the goodwill of the countries because the declarations uh, of uh, BRICS uh, has no legal power and there's no mechanism of enforcement. Um, so um, we have, um, we have produced the overview of implementation of the strategy for BRICS economic partnership in 2015-2012. And also this gives an opportunity to think more about the ways of institutionalizing the BRICS governance. What is especially important that in the past, the financial issue have been uh, cited as one of the causes uh, why it is difficult to set up secretariat. Now with the uh, widely spread online technologies, I think there's no, not even need to create a special uh, body located in some, in one of the capitals or elsewhere to do this job. It can all be done online or much of it. And uh, therefore, uh, I strongly believe that the institutionalization of the BRICS is the next step uh, and uh, I, I hope that uh, our uh, experts would contribute uh, to that uh, and it all would also become possible uh, to cooperate not only with, with, within uh, the BRICS itself but also have some form of cooperations on the topics and uh, uh, themes interested uh, interesting other countries with them uh, on a consolidated uh, basis. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, the uh, results of this analysis show that uh, uh, most, uh, that the, uh, the ratio of implementation was the highest in agriculture, science, technology, innovations, uh, and engagement of BRICS and uh, G20. Uh, also, some results were, uh, were reached in fields of trade and investment, financial cooperation, institutional connectivity, tourism, business and labor mobility, uh, ICT, engagement of BRIC and WTO. Um, however, uh, in manufacturing and mineral processing, energy sector, connectivity, and education, the success was not that impressive. Um, so um, I would say that one of the most promising uh, areas of cooperation uh, for BRICS today is uh, technical and technological cooperation. Uh, the BRICS Partnership for New Industrial Revolution was established. Uh, the BRIC Institute launched activities to promote the cooperation in the field of advanced technologies and innovation. BRICS Green Technology Platform was initiated uh, within uh, the uh, framework of BRICS Unidon Interaction, an internet platform uh, for technology exchange among BRICS countries uh, has been established. Uh, BRICS Financial and Investment Promotion Infrastructure was also strengthened. New Development Bank increased its credit portfolio uh, the, te the technical assistance facility of the NDB was launched. The interbank cooperation mechanism contributed closer, uh, to closer cooperation of the national development banks. Memorandum of understanding uh, was signed um, between uh, uh, national organization on trade and investment promotion as well as private investment within BRICS. 
Uh, however, we can see a lot of uh, still, uh, I would say, uh, non-achieved uh, potential in the field of trade and services. Uh, and uh, also mutual private investment uh, is having a, a very low share in uh, BRICS uh, overall uh, uh, investment. And uh, uh, I think it's necessary uh, to create additional practical tools uh, to close these gaps. Um, collective efforts should be increased in the fields of trade facilitation and technical resolution to support regional value chains in the post-pandemic period. Uh, one of the uh, main challenges to the area of financial cooperation of BRICS countries is to increase the capacity and effectiveness of the contingent reserve arrangement, uh, created as a mechanism to support the, uh, the currencies of the BRICS uh, member states, uh, especially in the event that uh, US dollar liquidity uh, problems would emerge, which is quite possible uh, these days. Uh, it was also recommended to establish a common settlement and payment system for the BRICS countries to ensure the settlement in national currencies of trade. Uh, and of course, it should uh, uh, not only make BRICS countries more independent and less dependent on the financial factors out of their control, uh, but also will decrease transaction costs, costs for the, uh, the actors. Uh, despite uh, the overall effect of uh, economic development, the uneven uh, uh, economic uh, dynamics of individual member countries uh, led to the uh, uh, slowing of uh, economic cooperation between uh, those countries. And uh, there is, uh, I think, a demand for increased of cooperation of uh, uh, brief countries to fight a uh, new crisis. Uh, and uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, in, the, in the future, uh, when the weakness of international governance institution uh, was revealed uh, due to COVID-19, BRICS should step up coordination on combating uh, not only e ecological tracks, but also uh, to uh, create a new uh, system of uh, governance for economic recovery and uh, mutual cooperation. Um, let me say, uh, in conclusion, also a couple of uh, things about the BRICS Civil Forum, uh, which brought together more than 400 representatives of the civil society online and offline. And they also have uh, uh, presented recommendations for BRICS leaders in the, in the field of food and healthcare, education and science, economic development, information strategies and uh, uh, environment, climate, sustainable cities and rural development, women and girls, people to people exchanges. Um, well, uh, uh, there was uh, eight uh, working groups for uh, for the preparation of uh, agenda for civil forum, you can see that the uh, the topics uh, which were addressed was uh, well, we covered most of the uh, agenda of uh, the civil society concerned. Um, and uh, uh, one of the issues this year, uh, the year Russian chairmanship was. Uh, the uh, gender uh, problems uh, in cooperation with the Russian Minister of Economic Development, um, uh, the toolkit Women Economic Empowerment, Empowerment and Greek Politics, uh, achievements, uh, challenges and, and solutions uh, was created. Um, well, I have mentioned the BRICS International School also, uh, which is uh, established uh, to train young professionals uh, through educational experience uh, uh, for all this uh, five lateral partnership. And uh, uh, what is, as I've already mentioned, it's uh, a good uh, measure to uh, build a pool uh, of talented youth from BRICS countries and beyond uh, 
uh, which will be the leaders of tomorrow. I think that over several years, more than uh, the hundred, uh, hundred of, of participants have passed, uh, maybe even uh, more than 200 participants have taken part in these activities, thus creating a network of cooperation between uh, younger experts and specialists. Um, so now the uh, the baton is passed to India, and uh, uh, this year will be the 15th anniversary of BRICS. And uh, I can say that India is doing a lot from the very start uh, to uh, promote uh, the BRICS movement. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, BRICS, uh, the, the theme for uh, India's chairmanship is uh, BRICS at 15, improve BRICS cooperation for continu continuity, uh, consolidation, and consensus, four Cs. And uh, 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 well, I think that uh, uh, despite the continuing pandemics, uh, these uh, efforts would be a fraud. Unfortunately, the situation now is not so good. For example, one of the first uh, meetings, uh, uh, which would have contributed to the, uh, to the uh, development of uh, BRICS agenda, the so-called uh, Raisina dialogue in April, has, has been uh, moved from offline to online platform again due to the outbreak of COVID. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, one more thing I want to end with is that the BRICS remains an open, uh, open structure, uh, open entity, which welcomes cooperation with other countries and international organizations. Uh, we are uh, proud to suggest the so-called integration of integrations meaning that uh, uh, the organizations like BRICS and other regional integration organizations can cooperate and can find uh, something, something in common. Uh, and uh, I don't see why uh, European Union, uh, if it would uh, leave its projectors, cannot find some useful um, uh, topics to uh, cooperate with BRICS as, as an organization to share uh, experience and maybe find some solutions. So I'm very glad that I had the opportunity today to speak uh, to the Italian and international audience. And I hope that would uh, uh, foster for more understanding and cooperation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, very, very much, uh, Professor Toloraya. It's, uh, you did a, a very exhaustive presentation and uh, uh, brought the, the BRICS strategy in the, uh, in the past, uh, with the past uh, Russian chairmanship and the prospect. And we need uh, really uh, to have a, a general um, picture uh, as you design and you report to us. Um, <coughs> now starting the discussion and the comment, uh, let me um, um, say my hello to particular friends, uh, the former amb Russian ambassador to Italy, Anatoly Adamishin, which is connected with us, and the representative of the BRICS Observatory of the University of Parma, Parma University, that is working uh, still uh, active, still uh, 2014, and we which uh, we have a, a change of document. Space in they are particularly specialized in what you said, the institutional aspects of BRICS uh, uh, coordination, and I'm very glad that they are connected with us uh, today. So now the discussion we want to start to break the ice, as we say, and uh, um, to start the discussion. Uh, my first uh, um, remark, uh, it's linked to the, your final conclusion. Why Europe, European Union, uh, doesn't uh, 
start with cooperation. And this is the same uh, uh, question that we pose here in Italy, and uh, we don't understand, frankly speaking. It's a really a great limit uh, that we find inside the European uh, Union policies, and we try to correct it. it. Um, our um, basic point is this, um, and I, I finish uh, this uh, short uh, connection with the discussion. Uh, we see in the global scenario a lot of tension, protectionism, new protectionism, new confrontation, uh, new sanction, and so on. Uh, but from other side, we see that all the states, including Russia, Italy, United States, uh, they continue to sign and uh, they, uh, for instance, common platform as a sustainable agenda 2030 for sustainable uh, development. This is a common platform that we have uh, among the states. So let's try to work to bring the attention and to work on what is uniting our efforts and uh, to limit the, the increasing tension. I stop here in my the fact. Allora, first uh, we request Molinaro. Molinaro is the, the chairman of uh, the read uh, uh, Italian dialogue in the Mediterranean area. Molinaro, it's uh, the words, uh, the floor, it's yours. Yes, I'll try to be short, uh, even though it's a challenging task, because uh, I would like to say so, so many things to our friend, Professor Toloraya. Uh, we met Gergi in, uh, in Rome, in the COI University. We have someone with microphone. Please close the microphone. Okay. Thank you. So, very, very shortly, um, as you know, Professor Toraya, we try to understand the position of the BRICS country, the BRICS group as such. Uh, we try not to focus only on the individual five countries because this is something that we can find in other institutions uh, and research uh, activity. We try to understand you as a group. As such, there were, at the beginning of this laboratory, two schools of thought. One said that this was an occasional meeting of uh, five governments, just for temporary commercial or trade or financial interest. Another group of scholars that were the majority still uh, working uh, at this laboratory, BRICS laboratory, thought there was something more than just an occasional uh, common interest because they believed there was some strategic, political uh, common interest at the beginning of the, of the BRIC and then BRICS uh, group. And we thought one of these interests is studying the document, especially the UFA document uh, of the um, BRICS uh, pre chairmanship in, in Russia a few years ago. There was the, a kind of identity uh, model of the what we, we, we call the we call the Westphalia mm -hmm. state model. So equality between states, international law in the classical way, and so forth. I don't need to elaborate because you already know the, the idea. In this uh, perspective, I noticed, for instance, that um, in, in the in, first of all in the document that you uh, that um, Professor Richeri sent us about the 12 BRICS summit in Moscow. Declaration, we saw a complete uh, confirmation of this uh, analysis. But we also saw uh, analyzing the document of, in the article by the foreign minister, the foreign secretary of, of India, Kanwar Sibal, uh, my vision of 2021. This also shows that, that there are two different aspects the contingent uh, temporary issues uh, that can be also. 
in contradiction between the five countries, and there is a mention at the beginning of, of his uh, article talking about the, the rise of China and its expansion, its policies in the South China Sea, and the general sharpening difference with, with the US under Trump. So there is a hint that there could be some kind of different uh, ideas about the South, the farther South East. I notice also in the first uh, conference called by the foreign minister of China, which was very long, <laughs> about more than one hour, there were reference to President Putin, to Africa, to European Union, to different issues, of course, to Biden. But uh, there was no mention of the term BRICS, no mention of India as a country, no mention of the Indian uh, president, the Indian leader. So this shows that there can be differences, and, but still there is something that keeps together this country on a strategic level, especially in the field of polit politics and security, which is something that at the beginning maybe would uh, be neglected uh, being the, the financial issue, the, the primary one. So in this context, and um, without elaborating about the dynamic, the political dynamics of, of Brazil uh, that we discussed uh, also in a confidential way in the, at the COI meeting some years ago when, when uh, Bolsonaro was just elected, we consider this option that was implicit in your speech today, that there should be, and, and I, see, I see an agreement in this respect of the Indian uh, presidency, a, a change an innovative change going back to the to the ambitious uh, strategic political goal of, and security goal of, of the BRICS group, not only the financial. So if this is true, this is the first question. The second, and I will close here, we as a network of which also um, Marco Ricesi Eurispes is a prestigious member and among many other municipalities and in public and private universities, we want to launch you an appeal. We are uh, organizing for the third annual um, year, for the third year, uh, the Interinstitutional uh, Euro Mediterranean Conference uh, an initiative in a little island where the very idea of Europe was born. It's called Ponza because uh, Altiero Spinelli, the drafter of eight years ago of the manifesto was confined there with other anti-fascist uh, uh, political opposers. So the idea is to create uh, uh, for the first time a Euromed uh, <coughs> uh, center for higher education and science diplomacy on sustainability. The name of the initiative, Ponsa Briamed, comes from the place, Ponsa Island, and from the Prima Foundation, which has uh, 500 uh, million euros of budget uh, for uh, innovation, innovation research on uh, food security, climate change, and, and, um, and circular economy, led by an Italian, currently the former rector of the Siena University, Andrew Riccaboni. So the idea is, since uh, the Chinese ambassador in, uh, at, the, at the World Food Organization launched an appeal when we had the meeting in 2016 at the Indian Embassy of the, BRIC, the first BRICS meeting in Rome of cooperation between uh, um, BRICS and uh, the Mediterranean countries, because this is our focus, the Euro Mediterranean cooperation, why don't you take this opportunity as an intellectual, not as an ambassador to BRICS, because this is not your role, but at least as a scientist, as an intellectual, as an inspirator of BRICS ideas, to cooperate with us in this enterprise. You know, we have a little villa, it's a small, it's a 600 uh, 100 meters, but, uh, but uh, 10,000 meters, uh, 10, meters uh, with the garden, for Having this cooperation, you know, when I had this meeting, for instance, about science diplomacy on um, circular economy in Gaza, putting together Israelis and Palestinians in Jerusalem, we formally invited the BRICS uh, group. At that time, South Africa was the chairman, and they did attend the meeting, you know, with the quartet group, with the, all the ambassadors uh, uh, related to this conflict. So the idea is, why don't you make practical your suggestion, you know, to, to focus on what you said was now the deficit part of the BRICS, you know, the higher education, 
cooperating with us. And this could be a bridge, you know, in, or, in, order, the, you know, in order to clarify some misunderstandings and some issues that probably depend also on communication problems. Allora, let's collect uh, some uh, other intervention and then uh, we ask uh, Professor Toloraya to comment uh, and possible answer. Uh, uh, maybe I will comment uh, on uh, Dr. Oh, Mullen. So, okay, okay. No right problem. now. Uh, let's go freely, freely. Okay. And no please, the microphone. Microphone. Uh, sir, microphone. Professor, your microphone is... Yes, yes, it's on. Uh, first of all, I uh, would uh, try to answer uh, the uh, Professor Molinaro's uh, observation about the role of BRICS. Uh, well, in fact, uh, BRICS started as an answer to the financial and economic challenges because it was formed uh, in the midst of the worst by the time economic, financial economic crisis. And uh, it was uh, sort of the instrument to coordinate the positions of the developing countries or the emerging economies in the G G20 format. And uh, this is how it started. But now we see that the BRICS has the potential and uh, in fact more and more used to uh, be an uh, answer to geopolitical challenges. It became an organization for uh, coordinator of geopolitics of the five countries. And this is especially challenging at the time when we see uh, this fragmentation of international relations. We see increasing conflict between uh, US and China, the two leading powers of today. And uh, of course, uh, that concerns all BRICS countries. They wouldn't like to take sides. Uh, but they uh, uh, can contribute to easing this confrontation and, uh, uh, well, being a platform, being a venue for, uh, for sorting out the contradictions. If uh, any of these conflicting parties and the allies would, uh, would like to uh, use this platform. Uh, so, well, I believe that, uh, although I'm not an uh, official, I believe that the, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, I have to put on the battery, otherwise I'll be out. Okay, that's better. I'm sorry, well, um, and, uh, 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 well, BRICS uh, is based on the, you rightly mentioned, is based on the idea of equality and non-interference into uh, internal affairs. Uh, of course, uh, that limits uh, the capability, uh, capacity of BRICS to uh, come to uh, important decisions. But, but, but since there's no dictated in BRICS, no, uh, well, imposing uh, the will of one country upon others, uh, this is a great experience for compromise, which may have been unseen in the, in the history of international relations. And um, this example is especially <laughs> important uh, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the current geopolitical situation. And I believe this is one of the uh, features of BRICS, uh, which is yet underestimated, but it, that can play an increasing role in the future. As for your uh, ideas, suggestions for, well, uh, direct cooperation, well, we always are for it. We are ready to do it and we're ready to do it uh, online and better on a villa, <laughs> that's even better, uh, because um, uh, we are open for dialogue and uh, we feel that we have no limitations to discuss any issues and uh, the more a contradiction they have, the better would be the discussions. But in your case, I don't expect much of contradictions. Thank you. I can just uh, guarantee that Ponsa is a wonderful island with the sea that you will enjoy to swim in. Great, great. Uh, the floor to uh, Anatolia Damishin.
was former uh, Russian ambassador to Italy, then Paolo Motta. Anatoly. <clears throat> carissimo, carissimo Marco, mi senti? Yes, very good, very good. Carissimo Marco, uh, I'm very prepared mentally to this speech, but I am not prepared <laughs> just in linguistic sense. Since in all these years in uh, Italy, my English became a bit, a bit weaker than it needed to talk to such famous people. At any rate, I believe that Professor Toloraya, whom I, I believe I know for a long time, made a very good presentation, presentation of the theme and the, of various aspects of these important things. And I believe that uh, it's, it's few that I could add. I'm very, very glad that my country continues this uh, policy of uh, strengthening ties with the countries of uh, BRICS, of the BRICS. And um, on the other part, I'm very, very glad, dear Marco, that you have put this theme on the discussion. So go on. As we say now in Russia, have a good flag, a good banner in your hand. Bye bye. Grazie. Thank you, uh, Anatoly. Hello, uh, the floor to Paolo Motta. Then I see the, our uh, Professor Kolachoglu from Ankara. He was uh, written uh, a paper, just uh, published a paper on BRICS. Uh, so we would like to have his opinion. Uh, Paolo Motta. From Good morning. Malaga, well, Spain. It's calling from Malaga, Spain. Well, I'm in exile here by the COVID. Good morning, Professor Doloraya. Well, the first question I think you have been already answering on the beginning was the question I posed in 2018, three years ago, that you were publishing on Neil Perriman. Uh, BRICS, we are in standby or revival? I think that already in three years, the situation has been uh, changing and the question is always the same, standby or revival? So that one, to that question, I think already facts are answering quite good. What you were mentioning, the new alliances, uh, Quad uh, uh, India, uh, situations in Brazil completely aligned with the United States and so on is changing quite the scenario that we were having and we were thinking. I was one of the scholars, like was saying Molinari, that I was expecting a lot from uh, was the first startup of BRICS because the approach was really of a strong change in all the financial uh, scenario. It was a big change and we were expecting to, that to this platform, the, uh, mm, it was enlarging. So all the initiatives that I would say, Russia was one of those who was pushing initiatives as, as BRIC plus and openings to other countries, seems to me that now they are completely, mm, well, put in a second uh, uh, level and they are not so urgent. So do you think it is space, this is the first question for uh, opening in some future, I don't know when, maybe a long time to other countries. This is the first. Second question is the role of NDB. NDB has been created already almost 10 years ago. And uh, we were also there expecting that NDB was taking a role, like uh, not alternative or competitive, but quite important on the world scenario, especially in assisting South-South projects. For the moment, as you mentioned, we have 76 projects, but they're all limited within the five member countries. Don't you think that could be uh, interesting that NDB also if it is saying, I'm opening participation to the bank to other countries, but in fact, this process is not so much uh, uh, successful for the moment. 
Don't you think that NDB could play a stronger role in really changing the South-South uh, cooperation that is now carried out by other banks in a different way? Because the principle of strategies of uh, NDB, they're perfect. Third and uh, last question, I'm taking on what you were saying now about sustainable development and uh, sustainable development objectives of Agenda 230. Uh, COVID countries, they were starting also that uh, very important few years ago with a very uh, promising urban forum. Slowly this urban forum was going uh, not any more efficient like before, has been merged now with the forum of the cities and so on. Don't you think there that also in this field, BRICS countries representing so many different continents, they could have a, a role of uh, pushing sustainability, especially in what it is, uh, sustainable development of cities? And these are my three questions. And uh, well, there's there are very many questions and we are talking about what are we expecting. Okay, thank you very much. Marco, okay. may I answer because otherwise there's so many questions. Well, no, no, soon. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Anatoly Lenich for his kind words, the uh, ambassador of the mission for his kind, kind words and his interest uh, in, this, uh, uh, in, this, in this topic, which is one of the central for Russian foreign policy, which he has uh, greatly contributed to formulating over the decades. And uh, I'm very pleased and honored to, you know, to see him here. Uh, then um, about uh, Professor Mora's uh, questions. Uh, uh, well, for one thing, uh, uh, the uh, standby or uh, well, new role for uh, for BRICS. Uh, of course, uh, now as I've mentioned, uh, we have uh, too many challenges inside the countries and uh, uh, we have many challenges uh, well outside of the countries to name just the russia us contradictions china us conflict uh, india china uh, well misunderstanding and uh, also uh, very turbulent uh, period of time when uh, BRICS might not be the answer for all of the issues uh, so, in a way, um, uh, it can be uh, uh, can be named as sort of the additional or standby uh, arrangement, but its importance is growing, and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, th this is uh, uh, this is uh, this is important. And, uh, at least uh, we are doing everything uh, uh, for the uh, growth uh, and uh, in improvement uh, of the of, of this mechanism. And, I mentioned that uh, uh, we would, uh, I'm, I hope that we will have some kind of uh, guidance mechanisms and kind of secretariat to coordinate uh, these, uh, these efforts. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't put, I, did, I, I, I don't have pen, so I, don't, I didn't put, uh, uh, what was the second question? The second question was, if you think that that idea that was uh, coming sometimes over and over, of enlarging the platform ah, yes. Yes, yes, about yes. The, uh, the brick plus and so on now it looks completely dead <laughs> uh, well uh, i would tell you frankly that there uh, there are different ideas within brick itself about the uh, uh, usefulness of, of this idea i personally think that the idea of having a sort of club of friends uh, of bricks and well uh, well, in the future, observers and uh, uh, well, guests. I think it's a good idea, but maybe it is not now the time uh, for it to be implemented because I said that the uh, that different British countries have different I ideas uh, on that. Uh, but I I believe that a day will come uh, when the interest of many countries, which are witness to closer cooperation with BRICS, will be satisfied, and. Uh, uh, we just have to wait, right? Yes. And uh, also uh, the third question. The other question was about, don't you think that NDB could have oh, yes. a, a role because NDB yeah, yeah. 
to yes, to act in other developing countries could be at least a tool to to join other countries in a practical way yes uh well and the b uh, is a commercial bank actually so it has the you know the uh, uh, sort of duty to support the uh, to the project within the BRICS countries uh which it does uh but uh, uh, it have to take into account this the profitability and well the commercial parameters factor so as far as I understand, uh, so far uh, there has been enough, not enough motivation uh, for uh, for you know, investing into project in the in, in the south. Uh, I don't think that that is excluded. I do think that uh, it is possible, and uh, uh, if well the NDB would attract some additional capital and participants, maybe I think it would be only fair for it to expand its activities for the. Uh, for the developing countries, for their markets, uh, and well, if not exactly South-South cooperation, but uh, to be more present in, in this sector economy, especially in places like Africa and uh, maybe Latin America, uh, because Asia has, in fact, enough of uh, in investment uh, investment sources. So, uh, well, I hope this uh, this would be uh, developed in this direction. Thank you. Uh, allora, now the floor to Professor Kolachoglu, then Professor Marinov uh, from Denmark. Professor Kolachoglu from Ankara, Turkey. Excuse me, Professor, no, your... The microphone, microphone. Microphone. Please unmute. Unmute. No, no. Microphone. Vogliamo passare a Marinov e poi torniamo a lui. You have uh, your microphone. It's closed. On, come si dice? Uh, non si sente. Allora. Let's switch to Marino. Su Vedi, tiene, lo tiene eh, chiuso. Sì. Eh, ora li scriviamo in privato. Eh. Sì. Magari nel frattempo. Ah. Allora... Uh, Let's switch to Marinov and then uh, we contact you. Professor Marinov. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Riccieri, for the fact that for a number of years you have been contacting me and we've been in constant communication, but I'm new to this particular type of events. Uh, so, um, what is interesting to observe here is that, first of all, I would like to say a big thank you to Professor Tolaraya for his uh, presentation in which we have uh, seen so many aspects associated with the recent activities of uh, BRICS. What is important from my perspective, because I have been into this area for a variety of reasons and also we had the idea with uh, Professor Riccieri about uh, writing a book based on uh, what is happening in the BRICS. And this is still something that is in the agenda because I'm a um, book series editor in two uh, very famous publishers, which are Palgrave Macmillan and also Routledge. But what I would like to say here is probably now the most important issue at the moment is how to address this kind of integrative strategy of BRICS. 
under the new realities. And when I say new realities, I have in mind variety of issues. And actually they can stay all the time and new realities are coming over time and they are identifying themselves with the new conditions in various countries. For example, it's been mentioned about Brazil and, um, and President Bolsonaro or any other uh, places and also external issues which are associated with this kind of political regrouping, with this kind of military tension even of political and also financial new orientations and also this kind of trends that are pretty obvious for deglobalization or digitalization. And all of this is associated probably with the formation of the so-called new pivots in which certain countries are trying to just lead other countries and associate them into themselves. So probably from this perspective, it should not be very um, astonishing the fact that, for example, EU countries are not very fond of collaborating with BRICS because they have probably certain different associations for a number of reasons. So from that perspective, I would say that whatever we are witnessing, and especially COVID-19, although um, very recently, uh, I with my wife, we uh, edited a book on COVID-19 and international business, The Change of Era. I believe strongly that actually COVID-19 is an accelerator and it, it is something that will stay with us in order that these trends that are in place to accelerate, to just become faster. And under this condition, what has been written, for example, as a result of uh, this last year, uh, Davos uh, forum by um, Schwab and his co-author about this kind of velocity, interconnectivity and complexity of everything that is happening, it is actually demonstrating the processes that are in the making. So to come back, uh, it is very important now that everything that has been mentioned in, in a couple of slides by Professor Toloraya, we have seen that this kind of strategies in variety of areas are quite important and they are in place. But what is in even more significant, crucial, is how to integrate all of these trends in a variety of ways among countries and in the variety of types of activities. So my question here is, is that possible? What is uh, actually the real opportunity in this direction? So here I stop and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, okay, well, yeah. uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Pro Professor Maranov. It's uh, interesting uh, to hear about your plans to uh, to publish uh, well, a new book on BRICS, which we feel is lacking. But while well, commenting on your uh, intervention, I would say that uh, uh, my idea is that, of course, uh, you know, we do not expect that many uh, Western governments um, would find it possible to uh, closely cooperate with the BRICS countries' governance due to various political reasons. But uh, what I was speaking about that uh, maybe uh, some use uh, can be of the European Union as an organization, uh, which is not necessarily bound by this, well, uh, alliance uh, ties or, well, uh, uh, representing a certain government one government to find its ways to uh, have some joint projects or at least exchange of information with BRICS countries. And uh, uh, one day maybe have a first on an official level, track two level, then one day maybe on an official level on the, on, on the silence of, of some international gathering. Um, so I think this, this is an idea that is worth exploring. That's, that's what I suggested. Now, Professor uh, Kolachoglu, you, I see that you open the microphone. Yeah. 
Finally. Okay. Yeah. Bravo. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and also, uh, I really enjoyed the discussions, uh, very vibrant discussions on the on the BRICS, uh, the groupings. It has become uh, on the fore of the international attention. So there are uh, very big and emerging economies uh, in the grouping. And also uh, there are new initiatives. Basically, uh, BRICS Plus uh, has come to attention for international audience. Uh, so uh, I'm wondering uh, what will be the uh, roles for the BRICS Plus uh, in coming years. Uh, China is also giving very importance for that. Uh, the other, uh, I think, uh, question, uh, many people, many experts and countries are uh, paying attention for that, whether there will be uh, an expansion uh, or an enlargement of uh, the grouping, because uh, depending on BRICS Plus initiatives, there are uh, some debates, uh, the grouping, uh, namely BRICS, will enlarge uh, with some other countries. So is there any uh, prospect and features for uh, future uh, enlargements in, in coming years? Uh, so regarding, of course, uh, there is a deepening process and also BRICS banks in, uh, BRICS bank is on the, uh, uh, development process, new development bank. Uh, so uh, the, my main concern here, uh, what are the roles for the BRICS Plus in coming years and uh, whether there will be a, a enlargement in coming years with some other countries. Uh, so my questions are regarding on that. Thank you. Uh, you well, th th thank you very much, uh, Professor Kolejoglu. And um, this question has already been raised today. And uh, uh, as I, I will say, say again, that uh, I was a strong supporter of the idea of, uh, if not enlarging, well, starting the BRICS Plus process, uh, making some countries, well, first partners for dialogue, then maybe observers. And um, I would tell you that my idea included Turkey as well. Uh, along with countries, this, this is personal, my personal idea. So uh, this, uh, when I was just thinking which countries may join, I think I thought about Indonesia, yeah. Mexico, yeah. Uh, Nigeria, maybe. Uh, so well, uh, a, a mix of big economies and big uh, big countries, which could con contribute to the South South uh, cooperation and uh, emerge uh, for to make BRICS emerge as a, as a platform of cooperation for emerging economies. So, uh, Tur Turkey was one of them, in fact, in my mind. Uh, some people argue that uh, Turkey is a NATO member, therefore it's not suitable, but well, uh, I personally think it's a good partner for Russians and it's an, uh, a country which can be uh, really useful for the promotion of the BRICS up. Uh, now, well, all uh, these ideas are sort of well felt uh, because of uh, not only COVID and well this international crisis, but mostly because of the growing confrontation. Um, well, you call the war, some some tell it hybrid war, some some call it. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't think it's uh, uh, really r r realistic now to expect any movement in these directions uh, for, for a time being. But, well, who knows, the situation changes. Soraya, I, I see in connection Sergio Arzeni, you mentioned uh, in your uh, representation the economic achievement of BRICS uh, and especially the particular attention of the world of enterprise, small, medium enterprise. Uh, Sergio Zeni is the president, chairman of INSME. It's an international uh, network of medium and small enterprise. It was 20 years uh, he worked at OECD, where he founded the, the special uh, uh, DG on uh, small and medium enterprise, and now is a chairman uh, of this international organization. So it's in condition to 
uh, enter in your uh, in this aspect of your cooperation. Sergio, the floor to you. Uh, thank you, Marco. Uh, indeed, the uh, the interest um, uh, of BRICS uh, uh, should not be focused um, just on. Um, uh, the new development bank, uh, big infrastructures, big business. Uh, I think that uh, if we want uh, a, a, re a, a sustainable recovery, we have to uh, rebalance uh, the economy of the world and uh, we have to give, uh, uh, thanks to the digitalization, uh, thanks to uh, new technologies, uh, the, the possibilities to uh, uh, small, medium-sized firms uh, in the, the South to, um, uh, to engage uh, more in international trade. And, and therefore, um, all forms of uh, cooperation uh, that uh, uh, and BRICS is uh, um, intended to strengthen the cooperation, as uh, you were saying, Marco, in a world with the rising uh, concerns uh, and, uh, and tensions, uh, we have to focus uh, on the positive aspects uh, on what, uh, um, uh, what uh, can uh, on what form of cooperation uh, we can uh, uh, make progress. Uh, and I think that uh, the uh, uh, building a partnership uh, among uh, uh, organizations representing SMEs among the BRICS would be an important step uh, to uh, to, to, to uh, design new forms to boost uh, trade among SMEs uh, and that is what uh, we would like to see in um, uh, as a development of uh, the, 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 the BRICS economic dimension. Sergio, Professor Toloray, you have an opinion about this? Uh, well, I, I agree, and uh, this is why the small, medium, and micro enterprise is one of, was one of the focuses of the, uh, of, of the Russian uh, chairmanship. And so, as I mentioned, several uh, documents were uh, adopted, and uh, I hope it, it will work. Uh, of course, um, of everybody in a sense, we, we now have many peculiarities uh, in, in doing business, especially to, at the markets of uh, one another. Uh, and uh, to be frank, uh, uh, we still uh, lack uh, some um, understanding of mutual understanding of business culture and well, business climate of each other. So we tend to uh, see each other through the, through the for example, through, through the U.S. eyes. Because if we if we want to have some statistics on South Africa, we most likely get it uh, from the UN publications or World Bank rather than directly. And so it also applies uh, for the doing business, and it's might it must be more difficult for uh, small and medium companies doing business with the partners whose language they don't understand, whose uh, mentality they don't fully grasp. And uh, there's a lot to be done. And um, in this, in this uh, uh, I think, in this area, lots of uh, education and consultations are needed. And that could be one of the, uh, one of the uh, venues of former, of, of free future activity. Yeah. Uh, if there is the, the representative of uh, the BRICS Observatory Research Center University of Parma, uh, 
I know that she is in contact and uh, she could uh, present shortly this observatory of the University of Parma because there is uh, the institutional issues of Greeks that is very important. She is not, she was with us, uh, sorry. Okay, allora, uh, Professor Zucca uh, from Milan is uh, uh, a member of our scientific committee and has a lot of experience in China, in Russia and other big countries. Harry, can you hear me? Oh, uh, Peter. We... I am Martina Migliorati from BRICS Research Center. Okay. Of... Allora, Marina Migliorati and then uh, uh, Zuc Professor Zucca. From yes, Bocconi good morning. Milan. Good morning, everyone. My name is Martina Migliorati. I'm an assistant of Professor Lucia Scaffardi of the Brick Research Center of um, University of Parma. And uh, we basically um, have a website, new website, in which we uh, collect all the documentation and we discuss. So we basically give uh, uh, the floor to young researchers to address the institutional um, approach of the of the BRICS uh, countries and to basically uh, try to understand what the particular kind of cooperation uh, they they develop. So thank you. Thank you to you and uh, best wishes for your work. I see in connection Ambassador Bosco that uh, put a lot of attention in its work uh, papers on the institutional issues of BRICS uh, inside the, in cooperation with the, mag the Journal of uh, Political Science, uh, Rivista di Scienze Politiche della professoressa Melchiondi. Allora, professor Zucca from Sda Bocconi University in Milan. Uh, yes, uh, good morning to everybody. I just have a few, uh, few remarks uh, about uh, all uh, the, what has been said. My first remarks uh, is, uh, uh, well, uh, we uh, all know what was uh, the initial uh, idea about BRICS. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, in, uh, um, what, I'm, or what I would like to, uh, to, to uh, uh, clarify is more about the future than about the past. Uh, if we speak about integration, uh, um, in terms of uh, economics, of pure economics, uh, integration uh, is uh, convenient uh, uh, for those countries that share uh, global uh, value chains. And uh, if I look to the five BRIC countries, uh, uh, it seems to me that uh, the trade between each other are far by being uh, at the top of the position. So let's say that trade between, uh, for instance, China and India, or China and Russia, or Russia and Brazil uh, are uh, um, uh, very little comparing the whole picture. I mean, uh, in none of this, uh, we see a trade uh, partner, which is uh, within the 10 main countries of trade. And uh, clearly this uh, has a meaning. This means that uh, basically the, uh, the value chain do not connect uh, those countries and uh, so my first idea is uh, why then uh, there should be a convergence uh, in terms of uh, uh, economies uh, if uh, the main partners uh, are uh, in other areas of the world. So that is my first question or, or remarks, let's say. Uh, second point that has been raised uh, was uh, about uh, uh, the role of MDB. Uh, MDB is not a commercial bank. Uh, uh, MDB is owned by the countries. That means that is uh, an instrument uh, of the political uh, uh, strategy uh, of those countries. And uh, again, uh, in, if uh, we think about that, uh, uh, like for instance, uh, the fact that uh, uh, MDB should invest uh, in third parties countries, 
Um, I don't see the reason uh, uh, since uh, uh, there are uh, the, the only real big investors on third countries uh, is China and uh, they already have uh, a very powerful development bank which is the China Development Bank that for instance uh, we were discussing about Africa they already have uh, three different subsidiaries uh, active uh, in uh, whole Africa so the point is uh, why should uh, um, China uh, finance or further finance uh, uh the the projects uh, in third countries through a multilateral uh which uh, by the way should change completely its nature because uh, in uh, in the case uh, of uh, uh third countries investment uh, the investment will be purely something which will benefit uh, which will go to uh, make uh, benefits uh, to a country which uh, is not uh, investing in the bank uh, and this is uh, something which uh, is uh, is clearly uh, uh, very different from uh, benefit uh, to country which are also investor to the bank and it change uh, completely the system of governance so my point is uh, 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 basically if we speak about the future what is uh, the common platform uh, that uh, uh, BRICS uh, are going to promote? Because uh, even if we speak about uh, cooperation, it's clear that uh, if there is not uh, some kind of institutional uh, organization, then uh, how, uh, for instance, the European Union that on the contrary has a, a, a specific uh, institutional uh, organization and uh, some specific mandates uh, in negotiation and uh, trading. Why it should uh, cooperate with BRICS uh, instead of cooperating with each single country? What is the benefit uh, to the EU in terms of uh, uh, economic and financial cooperation? to cooperate with BRICS. If BRICS do not have the power to negotiate any kind of specific agreement, if not uh, in terms of uh, uh, like uh, uh, cultural or uh, whatever. So I, I, don't, I don't really see what uh, is uh, uh, the, the future uh, if uh, is not found a strong uh, platform a strong common uh, uh, view of uh, uh, how to uh, uh, let's say how to uh, deal with uh, other big uh, uh, countries or big organization institutional organizations such as uh, uh, the european union uh, so this is basically my my point um, I follow the, 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 say the starting part of the story, and I think that when BRICS started, they had some kind of uh, uh, common platform. Uh, they were basically all uh, country in the development phase. Um, they were all uh, facing uh, an important growth, uh, reforms, uh, but it seems to me that uh, each of the five countries uh, has taken his own path, his own uh, development uh, uh, development uh, route, and it seems to me that this route uh, differ from country to country. Uh, I uh, heard uh, very uh, um, uh, carefully the uh, intervention about uh, uh, SMEs, but even uh, if we speak about SMEs. There is a big difference between, for instance, China, where SMEs uh, are uh, very important in uh, the uh, economy of the country, and Russia, where, on the contrary, SMEs uh, are uh, a very small part of the economy. Uh, so, first of all, uh, 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 and it seems to me that in Russian strategy, there is not uh, <coughs> the willingness to uh, have a very big and fast development of SME. 
it seems to me that the strategy is more to support uh, big companies uh, and uh, the development of big companies. So even in the internal uh, structure of the economy of the market, there are big differences. Uh, and uh, uh, I think that before uh, trying to uh, discuss uh, with other big entities, uh, it should be found a strategy of convergency. O otherwise, uh, I don't see the interest of each country uh, to uh, be part uh, uh, if not for a sort of uh, club for friendship uh, or uh, uh, collaboration in uh, the culture field uh, or uh, uh, and, and also in the culture I see a, a big difference between for instance uh, um, uh, the, the, the countries because uh, we have uh, uh, India and China uh, sorry, India and uh, South Africa who are English speaking countries and uh, it's quite easy to uh, have a co university collaboration because they have a common language. But when I come to Russia and China, uh, still uh, the number of people that uh, can uh, really, uh, especially uh, in university, especially in undergraduate programs uh, that can uh, really uh, uh, work uh, uh, in, uh, in English uh, are not so many and it is very difficult to uh, have an exchange program with uh, China if you need uh, to learn Chinese or with Russia if you need to learn Russian. So uh, even in, in that field, uh, I think that uh, it would be interesting to understand uh, what can be the strategy, even if, of course, uh, for university it's easier because uh, uh, I've seen that even uh, Russia and China are developing tour programs that are taught in English language. So PhD, which can be uh, taught in English uh, and uh, in, in this way develop uh, uh, also a common platform uh, for research. So this is basically my, my point and uh, my remarks. Some maybe are questions, some are just points that I put to the, uh, to the audience. Uh, and, uh, and basically, it would be interesting to me to understand uh, what other people think about it. Thank you. Zuc, uh, one question uh, before uh, Professor Toloraia answers. Allora, Professor Melchioni, she is the director of uh, a prestigious uh, uh, journal on studies on political uh, international policies. Professoressa Melchioni. Professor, the microphone. Microphone, microphone. Uh, thank you. I would like to thank Professor Toloraia for this lecture, very comprehensive and beautiful lecture. Thank you very much. My question is on the point uh, of the interaction, on the interaction between international institutions of BRICS. I would like to know uh, which is the degree of consensus uh, among the uh, BRICS countries and particularly uh, between uh, uh, Russia and China on the character uh, that uh, revisionism they are carrying on um, may have. Because, for example, um, the Chinese positions is is um, is very nationalistic. They aim to build uh, a Chinese era uh, and to to realize a revisionism of the of the world order with the Chinese characters. So uh, I, I I imagine that the Russian positions is different, eh? is more, uh, 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 is more uh, collaborative toward the, the, the rest of the world. Um, I would really like to know which is the Russian position about religionism. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Melchioni. Professor Toloraia, up to you. Uh, well, mm, I feel that uh, maybe we'd better collect more questions and then I uh, answer uh, all of them. 
but I can comment on this um, you know, briefly. Uh, well, one question uh, I saw was about uh, uh, NDB, and uh, I would like to say that it's, uh, uh, in fact, is making some step widen the number with beneficiaries, so it's not necessarily uh, to be an investor before getting something. Uh, and this, but this is just a minor question. Um, Professor Zulka spoke about uh, lack of economic cooperation between uh, between BRICS countries, and also that uh, EU cannot cooperate uh, or cannot uh, reach any uh, tangible agreements uh, with the uh, with a structure which is so different from it. Well, uh, I would say frankly, and maybe partially uh, answering uh, Professor Marino's uh, uh, question, that BRICS uh, was never meant to be a trade bloc. Uh, so if there's uh, uh, there's uh, uh, not possible for BRICS to to create some kind of uh, trade logistics, to create some kind of preferential zone or uh, well free trade zone, or to uh, make agreements with other trading blocks, and uh, it was never meant to do this. Uh, and uh, well, to be frank, if you ask me about what's the purpose of BRICS, actually, I would say that certainly it's not economic. Uh, well, uh, my opinion is that it doesn't necessarily correspond to the official point of view, the official narrative. Is that BRICS is an instrument to change the uh, structure of global governance. And this uh, corresponds to, uh, to the issue of the uh, revisionism in international relations. Uh, revisionism in international relations is a very sly term uh, because the structure of international relations have been changing all the time throughout the uh, human history. Uh, empires uh, came and went. Uh, the uh, the uh, rules of the game also was changed. So uh, this current revisionism is not anything new uh, and it, it would be natural. It would be natural uh, to try to freeze uh, the existing world order uh, which was created uh, in a different uh, political economic situation. It was based on the Second World War uh, results and then on the, uh, um, on the cold, uh, on the, and, and uh, on the cold uh, war era and it's uh, the uh, international order uh, dominated uh, by the West and by US. Uh, this is not uh, necessarily forever, and it cannot be, as everybody understands that we had the Roman Empire and when it was disintegrated, uh, and uh, well, you, you, you can know in history, you, you can you know, have lots of such examples. Uh, so, mm, uh, that's uh, not a revisionist, that's a normal process of uh, trying to build the international relations ba based on law, based on international law and based on the uh, respect to the lawful interests of all the countries, not trying to, uh, to dominate uh, the countries and uh, uh, dominate territories just because uh, uh, of advantage in technology, in military sphere, in economy, uh, in culture, uh, because uh, this is the thing of the past. Uh, this uh, was good in the time of European colon colonialism, but it no longer works. Uh, so um, what we're talking about is whether uh, this uh, d domination of the West will be replaced by Chinese domination. I don't think so, because China is not trying to I introduce some uh, uh, rules of the games. Uh, what China wants and what actually BRICS was is respect to sovereignty and uh, just and transparent rule for all the international actors. Uh, and Russia joined it. You know, we we, we had our uh, unfortunate experience of, of trying to impose our ideology, which was non-nationalistic, but well, ideology with, with that was right on the whole world, and you know how it how it, how it ended. So we're certainly not going to repeat these mistakes. And um, uh, we don't think, uh, at least I don't think that uh, Ch China would uh, uh, try to dominate and to, uh, for example, to teach other countries how, how to uh, build democracy with Chinese characteristics uh, or, or something like that. Uh, so again, um, uh, this is a normal process and BRICS is just part of this process because BRICS, 
uh, shows the example of new type of international relations, where regardless of the strength of the partners, we try to be equal. Uh, we try to take into account uh, the interests of all the countries, although this, of course, uh, brings the uh, lowest uh, denominator much, much lower. And um, uh, I'm sure that this process has gained force already, uh, well, some decades ago with the growth of not only China, but Asian economies, uh, with the decline in economic uh, uh, competitiveness of uh, uh, Western countries, and it will continue. And there's no, no, not possible to just to stop it and to freeze everything as it has been well 30 years ago. And uh, I think uh, BRICS is offering uh, uh, to be a good platform for discussing these issues, for discussing the alternative, for working out a coordinated approaches, because BRICS is not anti-Western, of course. Uh, BRICS uh, uh, is one of the uh, power centers uh, of the world. And we are, we're having the, uh, this uh, multipolar structure now, which is a uh, thin, thin, uh, which is the thin uh, the fact of life, and nobody's going uh, to get back to unipolar structure, uh, what, what, whatever anybody would want, how much anybody would want it. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Toloraya. Uh, I see among the um, participant, Professor Yarigina, Irina Yarigina. She invited us to attend the civil forum and the academic forum in two specific sessions dedicated to sustainability and environment. So we are very, very thankful for Professor Yaregina for this great opportunity. Some of us were speakers in this session. Professor Yaregina, floor it to you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's uh, the real pleasure, well, just um, you know, to be present here and uh, to listen uh, uh, to uh, Professor Tolaraya and uh, to all our Italian and Turkish and uh, um, just uh, Canadian and Danish colleagues. Uh, it's just a good time, well, just to discuss our possibilities for cooperation, uh, but we are really optimistic and thinking about the future. And uh, I consider that the idea of developing relations with uh, Mediterranean countries is also uh, worthwhile taking into consideration. Not long ago, we had a discussion within uh, the um, uh, Russian Institute of Entrepreneurs, and uh, just uh, there were representatives from the Russian Chamber of Commerce and from different ministries, and uh, just uh, the idea of developing relations uh, uh, with uh, BRICS, uh, Eurasian Union, Mediterranean countries uh, in particular um, uh, was discussed. And uh, just a very good um, opportunity is just uh, to uh, develop relations through a new development bank with uh, cooperation with uh, different uh, developing banks uh, in uh, our member countries and uh, in different countries, not only uh, in investment, because really as far as uh, investments are concerned, it's uh, rather difficult uh, uh, just uh, between Europe and uh, just Russia, for example. But uh, we can uh, just uh, think and about uh, some projects uh, that are not only within the scale of investments, but uh, uh, trade uh, is very attractive and uh, there are a lot of different vehicles uh, to cooperate and uh, uh, there are great possibilities in other spheres. Uh, we are living in a cyber um, economy and uh, the problem of the security of cyber uh, finance uh, is our mutual um, problem that can be solved. So um, thank you very much uh, for uh, the invitation and uh, for the chance uh, to listen to you and the ideas uh, will be taken into consideration and uh, we'll work together uh, on uh, the subject of further development of our relations. Thank you very much indeed.
you to you, Professor Yaregina. Uh, now the floor to Dalbir Alabat. Then I see in connection Professor Mancuso, that is a member uh, of uh, BRICS Trade Forum. And then Professor Anton Giulio De Robertis, I see it's very expert. Okay, allora, Dalbi Alava. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank Professor Tolara, thank you for a very insightful presentation. Uh, it, there was a lot to learn from there. And you would nicely elaborated that BRICS has covered 15 years. That is a very good time, sound time for an organization to make or break. And this organization is quite well that uh, now this pandemic came, Russia, China, India came out with the with the with this um, vaccination program. All these three countries showed the innovation. Though they came out differently, there was lack of some cooperation or coordination. Coming to the, I belong more to the geostrategic perspectives. This, now these three major countries in Asia, Eurasia, China, India, and Russia. China has its own strategic perspective. Mainly China uh, considers that there should be a unipolar Asia with China having a bigger say in that one and a multipolar world. Whereas Russia looks for a multipolar, multipolar world and India looks for a multipolar Asia and multipolar world. So Russia and India come closer but China has specific a perspective about Asia. And that is that there should be unipolar Asia dominated by China, number one. Number two is that this uh, BRICS is a mature organization now. And a lot is happening in Afghanistan. The United States is most likely to withdraw on 1st of May, if not 1st of May, maybe next three to six months. Has the BRICS come out with a strategy to stabilize this country that has been war revealed? Or th this country will be left by these three major powers that share borders with Afghanistan. I will stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Dalbir. Uh, Professor Toloraya, you have this. Well, uh... Uh, for one thing, you cannot expect uh, uh, wonders from BRICS and uh, Afghanistan uh, is something where the interests of many countries converge to the U.S. And uh, this is an insolvable issue for the key, if not centuries. Uh, so you cannot really expect um, uh, BRICS to use its energy uh, to solve this uh, unsolvable question. But, well, uh, if you look at the uh, declarations that the well the agenda for the BRICS for the coming 15 years, you would see the steady increase uh, in the number of uh, political uh, uh, conflict conflict issues uh, which are given attention to. Uh, so and uh, uh, this is at least demonstrate the unity of uh, of, uh, of views of BRICS countries. Uh, to, to, to which are members of the UN Security Council and uh, well in the uh, this time so the, uh, in the Security Council as a non-permanent member uh, so mm, I think that's an important factor of international life when such big and important countries have uh, well uniform view on some original conflicts uh, if you look at this last declaration the Moscow declaration I think they're about well maybe 20 or something uh, hot points which have been made. Some things I cannot agree to, like China wants to dominate Asia. Uh, China, China dominates Asia simply because, I'm sorry to say this, well, the, the whole culture and uh, heritage of Asia, it originally comes from, comes from China. Uh, as as uh, the same way as the, uh, uh, the uh, this is Roman Empire from most of the uh, European culture and tradition and mentality comes from. This is just a, a fact of history, and that uh, doesn't necessarily mean that uh, uh, Italy will try to dominate the European Union or China will try to dominate Asia. It's already happening. It's, uh, well, the, uh, mutual, it's uh, the, uh, the mutual 
attraction and gravity, uh, which is a part of uh, today's world because of the uh, growth of, of nationalism. And uh, uh, I think that the, uh, uh, the some artificial constructs like in the Pacific is uh, not so helpful in uh, in uh, development of the well building blocks civilization and blocks uh, of uh, uh, of the, of, on the future world. Uh, I would like to mention that BRICS it represents civilizations. Most of the countries are civilization uh, has a civilizational background, and it's only obvious that. For example, East European uh, civilization, which is represented by Russia, has very much in common with, uh, with many uh, former USSR, not all of them, of course, but former USSR countries and some East European countries. This is uh, uh, just the matter of uh, history and the matter of uh, nature, a fact of nature. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, Russia won't and has the ability to dominate it. And the same with, uh, with China and the same with India. Because India, India also represents the ancient civilization, which is, was most influential in this uh, South Asia region and, is, and, and it still is, uh, regardless of political uh, uh, contradictions of today. And uh, we're not, uh, we're not uh, about to see India dominating while well, Pakistan or somewhere, but they have the same ethnic and uh, philosophical origin, I would say, and uh, this is something that sh should be taken into account. Forgive me for being very sincere on this, and uh, this is these are my personal view. They are not based on some, you know, political uh, connotations or well, uh, in-depth research. But this is just how I see things. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. Uh, Professor Mancuso, Salvatore, I see in the connection. Professor Mancuso. No, allora, uh, Professor De Rubertis, it's up to you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, first of all, um, Professor Toralaya, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. That was naturally very, you know, illuminating. But uh, I especially appreciate uh, the, your remarks on your um, uh, on the, your, on, of your last answer about the danger of revisionism. Mm -hmm. I think that about that, it is necessary to be clear in terms that uh, what is important is uh, to fix and to be very clear about the rules of the games. There is a word on which there has been some discussion and disagreement, the liberalism. The liberal international order that the West, especially the American, regret is in danger, would be in danger. The point is, what do we really mean by liberal international order? In my opinion, reading carefully all the final uh, you know, declaration or of the BRICS uh, summits, the traditional content of the liberal uh, international order is observed and requested to be implemented and, and, and respected. The real fact is that after the end of the Cold War, in my opinion, starting with the Clinton presidency, West start to move from a correct orthodox understanding of the principle of the liberal international order to an interpretation that pretends to bend this principle to the current opportunities of the, of, of the Western politics. So in my opinion, the unifying uh, concept uh, of the BRICS and the ground of discussion, of engagement with the European Union, for instance, would be very effective if we, we I mean, uh, the people who have who, who has a correct understanding of the rules of the games that have been able to solve the Cold War and create the opportunities of a new world altogether, you know, 
uh, would be to, uh, to, to push, to, to press the Western leaders to discuss what really liberalism means. Because in my opinion, in this moment, the West forgets the main feature of the liberalism, the respect for the dissent, the opportunity to have different visions um, uh, that have right to, to respect in the, in, in the world and in, in, the, in, the, in the communalities of, of, of the international um, uh, community. So this is my opinion, my suggestion at least, to stick on the concept of liberalism and pressing for return to the correct understanding and the traditional meaning of this word. I don't know what you think about that, Professor Toloraya. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, I don't really want to be this just one man show. I, I, I think I don't have to comment on every uh, intervention and, uh, well, comment because they're so interesting by themselves. So maybe I would abstain from commenting further on uh, till the last uh, word. But uh, for your uh, comment, um, I'm very, you know, impressed by it. And uh, I was often thinking myself. Uh, for example, uh, why uh, there's such a huge contradiction between uh, the need for democracy uh, inside countries, which US uh, uh, pr pr promotes and which is a basis for intervention in other countries, and, and at the same time, dictatorship in international relations, uh, which should be headed by US. There's sort of contradictions, and I uh, fully agree that uh, liberal or uh, what we call neoliberal world order is uh, not the answer and that uh, uh, some new rules of the game should be established. Moreover, I think that BRICS uh, has a good basis to become a venue for such discussion. Some time ago I offered that um, uh, we can create a sort of uh, club of wise men of, uh, of yeah. BRICS countries. Correct. Who could, well, who could well formulate, uh, who could well exchange ideas and come to a conclusion uh, on about well uh, some basic principles both of uh, human humanity development economic development social development environmental development and of course international relations and uh, this club of wise men uh, could include a certain proportion uh, well in, in proportion maybe to population uh, not necessarily to gdp or western countries to try to create this kind of a uh, uh, well, I would say track to a League of Nations or something like uh, something like uh, a club uh, for creating some kind of ideology which can be presented uh, to the governments for well as a guidance. Well, of course, it's uh, it's maybe all pipe dreams, but I would say that the BRICS uh, are open uh, to this kind of discussions because uh, BRICS uh, vision of the international order is very is very clear. It should be based on the uh, international law. It should have uh, UN as a, as a central, uh, a central yeah. body. It should uh, exclude interference in international affairs and should be equal. This is it. Thank you. Now we have the request by Giovanni from uh, CSP. And I see in connection it uh, even Polina Travert, uh, she was uh, very active in an important conference, the Rise of Asia, that was uh, organized in February in Paris uh, University, La Sorbonne and Le Havre University. Allora, uh, Giovanni Cespi, and then I see even uh, Tamburelli, Professor Tamburelli for the uh, National Council of um, Research Council. Okay, Giovanni. Hello, thank you. Um, first of all, I would like to present myself. I'm a young intern at CSP, and I would also like to thank Professor Toloraya for your clear presentation. My question is linked with the first question of Professor Molinaro, if whether or not uh, BRICS have a geopolitical role. So my question was based on your uh, affirmation at the beginning of the webinar, and you said India made a political decision to join the Quad. Uh, are BRICS member concerned? Why? Is this about the stability of the group 
or about the fact that the quad is composed by Western countries such as Australia, Japan, and US. Thank you. Uh, okay. Well, I may just say, well, just to say briefly that uh, it's not an official point of view, uh, but I see personally as a scholar that quad uh, has very strong uh, anti-Chinese connotations. And uh, this, well, uh, increasing um, block confrontation and, uh, uh, well, making, uh, uh, creating new dividing line is not, is not a thing that uh, is favored by, by BRICS. Okay, um, now uh, Ambassador Adamissin and then uh, Paulina Traver. Ambassador Adamissin. Microphone. Cristiano Marco, ho alzato la mano solo per chiederti di darmi la parola verso la verifine. Hai capito italiano? Va bene. Grazie. Allora, po Polina Travert, it's connected. <coughs> Polina Travert. Okay, the audio. Allora, then uh, um, Gianfranco Tamburelli for National Council of uh, Research Council. And now in the chairmanship, uh, um, in the planning department of um, presidents of the Council of Ministers very expert in uh, Arctic uh, issues. <laughs> yes, thank you. yes, thank you. Uh, um, I would like to uh, just uh, two or three uh, short observations and, and might be proposals because there are a, a lot of really interesting issues um, that we could <laughs> talk about. It um, um, might be that the uh, professor Marinov, that I do not see if, if he's still connected, uh, um, talked about the possibility of a book. Also, Marco told uh, some, we had the talk time, uh, times ago about the book. Some of these uh, subjects, uh, like, uh, I'll say, the uh, BRICS uh, position, um, I'll say, this is traditional international law and the BRICS position or uh, relations between the European Union and the BRICS or um, the opportunity of some analysis of the uh, current uh, um, relevance of the geopolitical reasons at the basic of the BRICS, the BRICS initiative. Some of these very interesting subjects might be really, uh, I say, deserve a, a, a work, planned work, uh, a book. Uh, I imagine that uh, various of the experts participating uh, uh, might, uh, say, might be also ready to contribute. I think that I'm from, uh, from the Institute for International Legal Studies of the, I'm an international lawyer, so basically uh, from the National Research Council at the moment, uh, as uh, Marco uh, was saying, I'm uh, working at the uh, department on uh, planning and the coordination of economic policy of the presidency of the Council of Ministers, but basically I'm <laughs> an international lawyer. Um, so, um, we, um, I, I'm, I'm, uh, if, uh, if, if, might, um, if might be useful, I'm ready to contribute with some ideas for, for, uh, for, how say, for launching, for defining an idea of a, collect, of a collect, collect, um, collective book. Um, another, po another proposal, <laughs> say, is a point of interest and at the same time is a proposal. Um, uh, I see that uh, also in uh, the research, among the research subjects uh, uh, that uh, you mentioned when you talked, uh, I'm um, talking now Professor Toloraya's uh, speech, 
uh, and the presentation about uh, the subject of our academic research for academic forum. One is uh, BRICS and the G20. Uh, I'm very interested in this. And I propose, uh, I propose um, considering that Italy has the presidency of G20 this year, uh, uh, together with Marco, ma ma might be also an initiative of my institute, I think, of the um, Institute for International Legal Studies of the, the National Research Council, to organize a webinar, uh, to organize, a, 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 say, a, a moment of uh, analysis, of uh, exchanging of thoughts, about uh, uh, the position of Russia and the BRICS uh, in uh, this work, in this nego uh, negotiation for in, uh, in G20, uh, on one of the, uh, not in general, not so, so, so broad, but we can focus, on, for example, on energy, uh, uh, climate and environment, this is one of the sub uh, subjects that are working groups, and so we can focus on that. I personally also participated in the, the civil forum of BRICS in I think, for, think that it was in the beginning of September on this on this on this issue. So it's a, 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 it's a climate uh, climate uh, energy climate and environment. To see what the what BRICS uh, what will be the proposal of BRICS and Russia in particular uh, on this on this subject, what we can expect from the G20 if there are talks at the moment at the bilateral bilateral level between Russia and Italy on on these issues, uh, and in uh, this perspective. Um, uh, the meeting of uh, before before the final uh, before the final meeting uh, in October of the G20, the meeting of uh, on uh, environment, climate, and energy, uh, one of the, the events planned in the next months is planned for 22nd to 23rd July. So it would be um, say interesting to uh, to uh, to focus uh, maybe one month before. To organize something with the uh, Eurispes, with perhaps my institute or my institute <laughs> and the Eurispes and other, uh, to focus on this. What will be uh, the position, the ideas, the expectations of Italy, Russia, BRICS for the next G20? That's, uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, uh... Professor uh, Tamburelli, allora, uh, now we have uh, Paulina Traverti, it's connected. See, si, um, uh, Professor Barbieri from uh, Catholic University from Milan. Okay. Are other questions in the in the moment? Uh, I know uh, that uh, Molinaro and then Adamishi want to ask before going to close uh, the this meeting. If there is uh, any one that uh, any other that want to make question or remarks comment. Okay. Allora, now, uh, short uh, uh, Molinaro ad amici and then the conclusion uh, by Professor Tolorai. Thank you, Marco. Uh, thank you also to Professor Tol Tolorai for his uh, very encouraging reply. Uh, I would like to start from Gianfranco Tamburelli last remarks because I think uh, the opportunity for this uh, inter- Institutional Euro Mediterranean Conference in Ponza, scheduled for September 3, 4, and 5, it could be an opportunity to discuss at least one aspect of his idea, which is sustainability, as I mentioned before, the three issues of circular economy, uh, climate change, and food security, which is in the context of our project of identity cuisine. It's so uh, hot today because uh, we have to find a way also for 
defending our immunological system vis-a-vis -vis, uh, attacks from the environment and from the food in order to face other challenges from virus or other pathologies. Uh, in this context, uh, I also like the idea of this uh, journal. I think we can uh, also contribute with our series of publication from the uh, Italian Network for Euromediterranean Dialogue, as I mentioned before, to Professor Torreia. Now, my last word is another invitation for different topics that we already uh, dealt with with Eurispes organization of the Italian-Russian conference uh, two years ago on migration, because uh, every year we organize with the municipality of Bologna, which is one of our members, a conference on the global compact. So I would like to know if Professor Toraya can tell us something in view of this conference scheduled for the end of the year, December, and if uh, this he can participate in the BRICS panel, because we want to organize a BRICS panel on this topic. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Molinaro. Adamishin, now, Ambassador Adamishin. Carissimo Marco, mi senti? Yes, yeah, sì, perfetto, ok. Dunque, io mi volevo usufruire di questo incontro per salutare tutti i miei amici italiani, per dirti ancora una volta, Marco, che hai fatto una bellissima cosa con questa conferenza, e mm -hmm. che... Purtroppo non sono molto impegnato adesso negli affari internazionali perché devo uscire un mio libro qui in italiano, un libro di, della mia vita, e io mi sono molto preso con verificare la traduzione, la quale purtroppo non è, non è all'altezza. Ma così faccio una piccola publicity a questo futuro mio, mio libro. E, Uh, Maria Grazia ha pubblicato un piccolo pezzo, senza saperlo, che concerne proprio i nostri rapporti con il Vaticano, diceva che è una pagina inedita. Così ancora una volta grazie. E in acconezzo io avrei voluto scattare una grande благодарность a Batano Tolraia per il suo intervento, è molto piacevole che lo abbiamo visto qui. Так что давайте все вместе, как говорится, флаг в руки. Ancora una volta, grazie tante, Marco. Спасибо, спасибо. Спасибо. Allora, let's go to the conclusion. Uh, I thank uh, all the participants. It was a very, very uh, qualified debate uh, on the report of uh, Professor Raya. Before... Uh, going the, the floor to Professor Toloraya for the conclusion, uh, my personal recommendation is uh, in this uh, difficult period uh, full of change and new tension to start with initiatives uh, oriented to the common platform we have in common. I repeat uh, uh, the Agenda 2030, that is the biggest challenge we have uh, together with the recovery. It's uh, a, a duty for Italy, as uh, for Russia, as for China, as for Turkey, as for United States. And the state, till now, they are continuous renovate the commitment in this direction. So, Let's imagine and start some common initiatives on this uh, platform that we have signed and created in common. I want to thank you, everybody, and now the floor to Professor Toloraya for the conclusion. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Marco. I'm really impressed uh, by the uh, level uh, and, and width of knowledge of participants, and uh, you know, they represent a, uh, a very wide, a wide variety of uh, experts from many countries. And I thank the Institute for organizing that kind of a uh, memorable event. And I think that some good ideas have come out of this discussion. For example, uh, well, the idea of having uh, uh, sustainable development goals as area of cooperation between 
uh, BRICS countries and uh, the West, well, at least uh, experts, I think it's a very good idea because um, you know, we in Russia are very much interested and we have special institutions who are dealing with sustainable development goals, uh, creating uh, national assessments um, you know, uh, of this. And it's the least controversial subject out of many. And uh, you know, this could be a good political initiative. And I do hope that we'll continue our discussions and I've had the opportunity to meet all of you uh, in, at other seminars, including in Mediterranean or, 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 what, or, or other conferences, and, as well as sometime in the future in person. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Professor Marinov, you wanted to say something at the end? You say... Iran, yes, it, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Riccieri. Yes, I would like to, to say just several words in line with what I have uh, just written in the chat. Uh, what I would suggest is everyone who has an interest in uh, contributing to a book, um, let these people uh, send you some very uh, brief, let's say, half a page up to a page the idea of what they intend to write about, then when you collect all of this, you send them to me. And I will uh, then see what can be done about all of these different kind of ideas and submissions. Then if need be, I will uh, just um, initiate a Zoom meeting in which uh, we can reconvene and re orient the approach through which we are going to create the book and then in a very short period of time if there is a will and good uh, dedication the book can be in the marketplace so it will very much depend on the level of interest on the coherency consistency and the focus of what the book will be about. We still do not know what it will um, materialize in and whether it will materialize, but let us give it a chance and uh, figure out what it will be. So thank you very much and uh, I hope this will be something that will be brought to a successful end. To Professor Marino, let me make a reference to your business uh, school in uh, Denmark. And uh, Professor Toloraya, what to say? Thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's hope to see in person with all of you in another conference in Rome uh, to everybody. Thank you again and goodbye. Ciao, ciao. And uh, let's thank you, Marco. Bye bye. Thank familia. you. Ciao, ciao. Arrivederci. Hope to see you. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. <laughs> thank you very much. We call you. And stay well, all of you. Stay well <laughs> in this very healthy, <laughs> secure times. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Ciao, bye. ciao. Ciao, 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 tutti. Ciao. <laughs>